There we go. All right, welcome. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Dev Chatter uh, for our uh, not so common uh, weekday streams. Greetings, everyone. Hello, welcome. Glad to see you're all here and back for our streams. Uh, I want to make sure that I thank uh, those couple of people that jumped in with uh, resubs right off the bat. Uh, that is an awesome way to start a stream. So uh, thank you both to Katrina and Mr. Shoji for, uh, uh, I guess, clicking that button like right at the start of the stream. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Glad to see you're all here. We are, yes, here on a Thursday, which uh, for some of you that have been following our stream for the like two and a half years that ha that it has existed, uh, this is probably familiar for me to be live at about this time. Uh, our old schedule used to be, yes, it is Thursday already, we lol. Our old schedule used to be uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, my goal is to get back to that, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, my schedule has cleared up a little bit, so I, I think I can squeeze in some streaming. Uh, if I end up doing an average of three streams a week, at least know that they'll be on, on those in those normal time slots uh, that you're all used to. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. Feel free to talk in the chat. This is a really friendly community here. Feel free to ask questions of me or other people in the chat. We are all interested in programming and other technology, gaming, etc. Just if it seems like a thing that you might hear about on Dev Chatter, feel free to chat about it. Uh, Wheatlaw, I do not have uh, i7 running right now, uh, though I guess I could. Um, just to give you the menu control of that menu if you really wanted. Uh, but Wheatlaw, you can just type in Lime. If you just type in Lime, it's going to change this one. Uh, so <clears throat> some of the people in chat are already messing with some of the various overlays and other stuff that we've done. Uh, if you are someone that is interested in seeing that kind of stuff, uh, how we built like the overlays and other things, uh, we are going to be doing uh, some chatbot type stuff today, though not likely the... The, specifically the overlays today. Uh, we will do some more of that sometime soon, looking at how I got stuff on the stream, like it's visual that you can control as a viewer. Okay, so the bot is starting up right now. That's what I was doing right here. And when I start up the bot, you're going to notice a couple of things. First off, it's going to go and do the debuggy stuff. And then I'm going to sit and wait and hope that it, uh, well, I was apparently debugging something at some point, like that. I should be careful debugging in these files. <laughs> Those are not files you want to debug in too often. Uh, okay, so the uh, you'll notice the bot just said in chat, Hello world, the bot has arrived. So that is the bot that we're going to be working on in today's stream. It is our C Sharp and .NET Core chat bot that we built into a, uh, into a website. I need to be careful how I say that. Uh, we, we've done some other ones in other places, uh, but that's where this one is. Uh, so greetings, welcome. Hey, Greendoff. Welcome, welcome. Um, so this is an ASP.NET Core website. It's a .NET Core 3.1. It is running in C Sharp. There is some JavaScript also that is helping to run some of the stuff around the stream. Uh, I will point out that these green lights that you're seeing going around, which uh, by did, did I say green lights? I meant purple lights. Uh, these purple lights that are around the, the stream are actually not controlled by this bot. It's actually a separate bot that we did as like a one-day stream to show how you could build a system tray-only application that could do that kind of thing. So it was a really fun stream. We did it a long time ago. Um, and uh, yeah, that, because uh, that's not what we're doing today. Um, <clears throat> We did that as, as like a little one-off so people could see how to build a system tray-only icon that still spun up a web server and let you control those. Why did it shut off? Oh, someone typed black. Wheatlaw! Wheatlaw, you trolled me perfectly. I didn't even notice. Good job. Good job. Wheatlaw got me with that. He got me with that. He made he made the, the thingies black and... And I don't handle that nicely, I admit, in the in 
and it just turns black. And it's like, yeah, we should do some kind of thing there. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> We're, what, five minutes into the stream and chat has already successfully trolled me. Well, this is going to go well. <laughs> okay, so, um, as I said, fun community. Uh, so... In case you're wondering, uh, it is not just named colors that you can do in there. So it's not just like white, black, lime, purple, etc. You can actually just put in any hex color you want. So if you want um, red, for example, that'll make it red. Yeah, or what Mr. Soji just did with that, what turns out to be a like a grayish blue color, I guess. <clears throat> so hex codes work also. Because uh, why not make hex codes work? It gives much better control over the color that you want. Because people don't know some of these really strange color names that happen to exist. And you'll also be shocked by the fact that, like, dark gray is, like, not as dark as gray, I think. There's, there's weirdness in the color names that just makes no sense. <clears throat> okay, so... Stuff I want to look at today. So we have not messed with our chatbot in quite a while. Oh, I almost forgot the other thing I was going to mention. Uh, I talked about the fact that we did like one-off episodes. If you want to see episodes like the one I mentioned where we did a um, a system tray only icon, uh, system tray icon only application. So it just loads as a system tray, but also spins up a web server and is actually what controls these overlays and is like a fully integrated chatbot into Twitch. Uh, we did that as a one-off a long time ago, and you can actually find the archives of all of our old videos on YouTube. Uh, you can find a good deal of our archives here on Twitch, but going all the way back to the beginning of the channel, back in the beginning of 2018, 2018? Yes, the beginning of 2018, uh, you will see all of those. There's a huge archive of videos, um, which should shock no one, considering the fact that this is like episode 241 of Dev Chatter. Uh, hey, welcome, Crimson Green. <laughs> and yes, Goldenrod is actually a really nice color for those. Um, so you can find those on YouTube. I linked over there. There's also links down below. Uh, we also have a couple of other things. I mentioned that our community is really, really friendly. Uh, if you want to chat with our community about stuff, there is a dev chatter discord again, that has existed for a couple of years. Um, and, uh, it's got a really nice community of people that, uh, are just interested in the same stuff we are. So very, very nice places. Okay. Let's dive in and have a look at some code now that I've mentioned that stuff. So, gotta, I have to remember how this thing's all structured, because I haven't been in this in a while. Uh, so those are events, extensions, things. So we have the core of the application, which is going to be the mostly not dependent on stuff, though I probably allowed the core to understand the fact that it is dealing with chat, and probably even specifically Twitch chat. Uh, despite our initial plans of supporting both Twitch and Mixer and other things like that, the fact that Mixer is going away takes that one right off the list. I mean, going away, sort of. I think it's merging with Facebook Live in some capacity. I don't know exactly the details of that. Uh, but I'm I'm glad we didn't go and put in a whole bunch of effort into those other ones. Uh, we have all of our infrastructure concerns about EF here, our connections to the Google API, all the connections we make to Twitch, everything we do that's web development, but not the website is in here. And then that's the website that is controlling these overlays. Uh, so I think that core is probably where our commands are because that makes sense. It's core to the application that we have chat commands and understands that we're dealing with chat. Uh, even though it didn't necessarily know which chat, it is going to still have these in here. So these are the commands that are apparently available that are not specifically part of a game. So let's, so I was mentioning that I wanted to do some chat games, uh, specifically more stuff that people can do in chat. And I, oh yeah, we've got roulette. Did we ever finish roulette? Oh yeah, it's that roulette. Yeah, we did. <laughs> oh yeah, see? killed me. Uh, and I think it tries to time you out, but I don't think it can time me out because I'm the, the streamer. Obviously. <laughs> okay, so let's build a couple more games. Uh, so, things I was thinking about building today. 
Uh, let's go ahead and stop the bot so that we can... Well, like, you know what? Yeah, it, it's going to give us a whole bunch of... Red, it's going to give us blue squiggly lines the whole time if I don't stop the program from running. So, let's go ahead and go with... Um, what do we want to build first? Uh, I want to I want to make some games that like uh, risk your uh, chat currency and things like that. So how about we'll do slots? Hangman, H Hangman exists. You can you can play Hangman if you want. All right, what's the base? It's base command. I was like, what's the base command called? Base command. All right, so this is going to be slots command. Everybody's got one of these things, and they all spin around a bunch of emotes, and it works well. Uh, base command takes in a repository and has a handle command. Looks good. We can do that. Okay. Uh, so now that that exists, let's go ahead and uh, oops, not that one. This one. Okay, currency generator. That's what we do. That's what it's called. Okay, that's fine. And the settings factory. Interesting. Yeah, I totally remember how this code works. I don't, I don't remember how any of the code works. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Welcome to programming. Where we all just dig in and try to figure out what's going on. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a currency generator and a settings factory, because those seem like things that we're going to want in order to wager some uh, currency. <coughs> uh, I recently made a hangman for a Stack Overflow chat bot. Stack Overflow has a chat? Worked on the first try after it failed three times. Yeah, exactly. That sounds about right. Okay, so... All right, so that would be how I would get settings if I want to make settings for it, which I do want to make settings for it. So we're going to make settings for it. Instead of storing that, we're going to do this. And the settings are not going to be roulette settings. They are going to be slots settings. So slot settings are going to sit next to this as a separate class because this will let the streamer configure how they want this to work. Hey, Todd, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for both the, uh, well, well, also for the uh, the resub, but also loving the uh, Dev Chahai and also the Swig Claude uh, Potato. Good stuff. All right, so what do we want as settings? Um, how about uh, default bet? Maybe someone has, maybe someone wants to do the default bet. And what else are we going to have in here for the slots? Um, how about uh, wheel size? I don't know what the thing... So, like, the way a slot machine works is it's like a cylinder with symbols on it that's spinning around, right? I mean, a cylinder, right? But it's, you know, clearly not, like round because there's flat sides to show you the symbols probably i guess you could do a cylinder and just whichever one's showing on front i don't i don't know exactly but uh, i don't know what I, i'm assuming it's called a i'm thinking it's called a wheel and i'm thinking number of uh icons um i'm just i'm just thinking about this because then i can get this basic structure in here uh, i'm just thinking like yeah let's build this like what's going to be on here because i know i'm going to have settings of some kind do, 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 do. So roulette settings oh, uh, is going to change to slots settings. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, let's see if we. Let's make a random.
We'll just do that. It's random enough. This isn't an actual casino. Okay, so for those that, uh, if you're not familiar with C-sharp, uh, when I create the random here, it is going to use a time-based seed. So, um, while this is not the, like, I would not do this for an actual casino, uh, this works for our purposes, because realistically, who's going to really put in the effort to try to rig this bot, uh, especially when there's no real money value to rigging the bot in any capacity? Okay, so... Uh, uh, not, not console. Uh, chat client. Send a message. Um, yeah. Hey, how's Basuk? Welcome back, my friend. Glad to see all these familiar faces showing up in chat there's no real money event uh <laughs> well see you wheat lol yep sorry uh will there just be one wheel or three uh so uh dr todd i'm thinking i'm thinking three wheels most likely but maybe we'll make that configurable as well uh, i do want the basic odds to be adjustable so like how many emotes are on the wheel definitely does matter uh, because a, a streamer might want it to pay out more easily or less easily or something like that. Uh, so we'll probably make all of that configurable in some capacity at some point. But for now, uh, we'll just go simple. Okay, so uh, sending out a message that says, yes, this is slots. That ought to be good enough. Uh, I need to jump over into... I thought I had... Uh, What is this? Games registration, hangman game. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I got it, I got it. Uh, core registration. Um, did I, how do I register the commands these days? Do I do it automatically? Just based on them being commands, or was I manually doing it? For each assembly, register the assemblies assignable to base command as I bought with a single instance. Okay, so I don't need to do anything else uh, with that. Uh, and in base command, does it determine the command? How does it get the, the default command word? Uh, command words, command info, so... Insert at zero the command word on the command entity. Uh, do I just default it to taking slots? You know what? Let's try it. I forget how it works. I'm gonna be honest with you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I've worked on the chatbot. Uh, lately, our projects have actually been a couple of other ones. Uh, we were working on our Interactive 7 uh, for quite a while, and that is actually probably the 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 neatest of our projects, in my opinion. Uh, it gives chat control over... Oh, why did I even put this on the screen? You guys don't care about that. Um, it gives chat control of Final Fantasy 7, so chat can do things like applying status effects or changing the equipment of characters while they are playing. Yes, I looked away for at least a week. Nobody can remember beyond a week. Yep, that's that's accurate. Yeah, once a week is gone, you don't remember any of it. Okay, uh did the Oh, yes, the bot did join. Hey, okay, so it does work. So the neat thing is be uh, because we did, well, here, let's see if we can explain how that worked. So our command words are right here. Those are set, assigned to this value right here. And we get that from the command word right there, aliases, 
We don't have any aliases for it in the database, but we should have the basic command word, which, where is that? Command word. Where did I define that? So that's the one in there with that. I know somewhere I'm reading this thing and chopping off the like the part command. So I look at the type somewhere in my code and I chop off that part. But I can't remember for the life of me where we did that. Well, we do it somewhere. Yeah, get that out of there. Aliases. Yeah, we don't have any aliases, so we're not going to get anything out of there. We're going to sign this. And somewhere I default it. Sweet. I guess I won't remember where I did that. But somewhere in our code we do that. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, uh, so the command definitely gets run. Let's go ahead and build up a collection then. So for now, I think it's going to be a collection of string. Um, the reason I'm thinking this is for now, I don't have like the emotes as a concept. So the only way I'm going to really be able to both identify them and use them is by their strings. So we're thinking that we're going to use emotes. So stuff like that might be an emote or we could do um, like, like that. So there are a whole bunch of uh, emotes that are on Twitch that we can use to do this. Hey, Coded Beard, welcome. Long time us no see, friend. So we want to stick with global emotes that are pretty much just always available. And uh, that that should work fine. So it'll be a whole bunch of faces and other silly things. Uh, I guess we can probably get away with using some of the prime ones, maybe? I'm not sure. We'll have to figure it out. You, oh, Coated Beard, you've been moving house. Uh, well, that's fun. Uh, I mean, it's it's fun in some ways. It's not fun in some ways. Uh, what are some other good Twitch emotes that we should use? Hog Champ? Hog Champ. All right, so Pog Champ is in there. Uh, what else is in there? Uh, hey guys is a good one. Uh, seems good. Bible thump. Yep, we can we can Bible thump. That's a good suggestion. Bible thump. Um, yes, moving during a pandemic is absolutely interesting. Uh, not like that. We need not like this. It's got, we've got to have not like this. It doesn't look very interesting in here, but because I'm not putting the emotes in there. Uh... <laughs> All right. So brain, brain slug, what face and is dark mode available for everyone? Let me just copy these. Uh, copy. And dark mode. Uh, code with Sean. Uh, you need to schedule to talk to your user group this fall. You have Steve Smith on Tuesday. Uh, so that sounds entirely possible. Uh, depending on things code with Sean. Uh, feel free to ping me uh, somewhere, Twitter or uh, something like that. It, like a, Send me a Twitter message or a Discord message or something like that and we can talk. Uh, sometimes burning down makes more sense. Burning down makes more sense? Oh, oh, oh. How's <laughs> Bazook? I just got what you were talking about. That's good. That took me way too long. Uh... Awesome. Sounds good, Sean. What's Steve talking about, by the way? Um, okay, so... We'll call this emotes for now. 
And actually, let's move this. This is not going to be... Uh, let's initialize this in the field for now as a read-only static. Yeah. Okay, so I moved it up there to be a read-only static uh, of our emote choices. And what do we want to do with this? We want to... Uh, Okay, so for now, uh, we'll skip all the charging stuff and just make it uh, randomly choose three emotes. So, <clears throat> uh, we'll do a for loop because it makes it nice and easy. And we'll say, uh, you know what, this is silly that I'm going to do it this way. Results equals new list of string, and we'll say results dot add emotes. Do I not have a random selection now that I think about it? My random. I do. <laughs> I do. Yes. Yes. I was just thinking, like, do I have a thing that just does this? Oh, no, it is not. It is just, I made it static. I wonder how it works. Uh, choose random item from choices. <laughs> uh... My random, choose random item, emotes. Uh, chosen item, chosen item. I'm not sure what I was doing wrong a second ago. I must have typoed something? I must have typoed something somewhere along there. Anyway, um... Uh, those should be in the settings. Yes, Wheat Law, they, they will be in the settings. Yep. Uh, and for testing purposes, try sending a response of string.join the emotes. Uh, is there no shuffle in link? Uh, so, Wheat Law, there's, there is not a shuffle, but there is a way to shuffle. And I bet my choose random does it. No, it doesn't do it that way. Uh, but it could. Uh, so, if, if someone is wondering how to shuffle... Uh, there are a number of ways to shuffle if you want a really efficient but quite quick way of shuffling. Uh, this is a way that you can shuffle in uh, using link. Uh, so order by quid.newquid. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Helps if you do that. Uh, but then that is a shuffled list right there. So, order by a, a... Yes, exactly. Yep, as Mr. Shoji said, you can just order by a random assignment. So you could also random number if you wanted to instead of doing a GUID. Uh, but uh, by doing GUID.NewGUID, you get a... a you're not going to have any duplicates, so you don't have to worry about that. And it works pretty quickly. So uh, as long as you're not doing, like, millions of records, you probably won't notice a difference with doing that. Uh, you were thinking of starting streaming, writing your home automation system, but the internet in your new house is too slow. Uh, that's what I get for living in the countryside. Yeah, coded beard. That is one of the one of the problems with uh, locations where we want to live and internet connections. Uh, I wish I had better internet where I am as well. Um, sorry, maybe it's a question that was out of place, but um... oh. Uh... Rodriguez, uh, I would gladly tell you, we are going to make a little uh, slot machine that is going to print out emotes. So, um, 
the suggestion of just doing a string dot join to just spit out the emo emotes that Wheatlaw was talking about, um, that is uh, probably something I should have done, but I'm now close enough to having made our selections in this that I'm just going to do the selections now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do a chat client send message, uh, and the message I'm going to send is... Let's do a string dot join of our results. Uh, whoops, separators first. Uh, and we're going to do space separated. Space separated ought to work. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be the only thing we do for now. We'll just be this. Um, oh, Rodriguez, that is a great question. So I use Mediator in a lot of my projects and things like that, but this one is actually just a command handler pattern. So this is just a standard uh, command pattern that this one's using, not using Mediator or anything like that to uh, facilitate the uh, commands themselves and the wiring up. Uh, but um, I wasn't planning on putting it in this project, but I will probably use that in a future project. Yeah, so um, I use Mediator for a number of uh, projects. I actually use it in my client projects as well, not just for like side projects. It is a nice uh, way of sorting, of sort of just abstracting away some stuff. Fuel stable, welcome, greetings. Uh, so fuel snable you you are absolutely correct if you if you are worried about if you're worried about that you could do something else um the like when i when i say that that's a shuffle that works it works well enough for most purposes that developers are going to do um if you are built again if you are building anything where you truly need uh, a good distribution, good randomness. This is not the way to do that. And you are, and you are right that there is some question about that. Uh, I don't know if the uh, unique identifier creation in C sharp, uh, and by that, by that I mean .NET, is using. Um, I don't know if they're using a uniform pattern that is going to be, uh, you know, essentially sequential. But you need to be careful because some systems do make. Uh, essentially what are sequential GUIDs, so like they try to factor in a time element and things like that, uh, which is common for um, people that like using IDs uh, that are uh, GUIDs as their, the IDs in a database, for example, have to use something called a sequential GUID. Uh, and that essentially means it is going to be a random GUID, but they're going to try to use some time elements to make sure that the GUIDs they generate are in order so that uh, the table does, uh, does not have its um, clustered index restructuring all the time. Yes, Wheatlaw is correct. Uh, you should not create a new random. If you create two, if you create random the object in C sharp twice in close succession, you could get multiples that were the same potentially. So in C sharp, if you are going to create a random, you want to create it at some point in the beginning and continue using that same random that you made because it will have been seeded. Um, yes, uh, the pro the default seed is time-based. I don't remember the exact implementation of it, though. Okay. Anywho. Uh, Let's go ahead and give this a shot, since this should work. I'm surprised no one tried typing in slots into chat. Hey, hey, there we go. Look at that. Oh, man, I was so close with the seems good. Se seems goods. Oh, so close. Nice. Great job, everyone. Those are, those are that's that's some good testing. 
<laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, so I think that I think that piece is working. <laughs> Sloths. <laughs> Thanks, Wheatlow. Yeah, that one's not gonna work. Uh, we so we can alias those. Um, I don't remember the syntax, but we do have a command in here for adding aliases to our commands if we want to uh, make it so that typos and things like that do work correctly. All right. Um, aliases. There you go, Wheatlaw remembers. Uh, proper testing includes breaking it, right? Uh, how can I break it? Uh, leading lady, I am not sure how you can break it, but if you successfully break it, uh, I would welcome that, as that is a great way to, uh, uh, well, make sure that it's working right. Uh, I, it was funny, I was at, at first I was like, okay, how am I going to test this? And I'm like, oh man, this is going to be like the worst thing to actually unit test, because unit testing random is annoying, to say the least. Because all you can do is say, all right, well, let's take out the random generator and put in, you know, specific, you know, mock your random, essentially. And it's like, okay, cool. Yep. <laughs> okay, uh, what do we want to do? So that gets us back those. So first off, um, any set needs some kind of payout. Uh, how do I have no sloth emotes? That is a good point. Do I not have any sloth emotes? Not as far as I know. Maybe they've got a name. Uh, Dr. Todd, no, i7's not done. We're gonna, we're gonna go back to working on i7. Uh, I just felt like working on one of these, working on a classic thing, because, uh, we have not, I have not done my weekly streams in a long time. You know what? <sighs> I can't, uh, well, I can't continue down this route. I was going to keep them strings, and then I was like, you know what? Let's take it from strings and make it, um, make it a, a, a value tuple. But then I realized that I'm going to need a third property, because I was like, yeah, we'll do, like, the payout amount and the, and the, and the string. And I was like, that's not bad as a tuple. That's not the worst thing. But then I was like, okay, as soon as you're even thinking that there might be a third thing, it's time to just make a type. So we're going to make a type. So let's jump over here, and we're going to say, I don't know what this thing is, um, slot emote, slot emote, slot emote, yep, it's a slot emote, and it's going to have a property that is a string, and that is the text, and it's going to have a property that is an int, and that is the triple payout, payout, payout's one word, payout seems like one word to me, int, uh, we'll have single payouts as well, and this part we can test. So we are gonna we are gonna get some tests on that. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about serious sloth. Do I not have serious sloth? Yeah, I have that. <laughs> Thanks, Wheatlaw. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Wheatlaw, uh, we would we would need to uh, mock out our random in some capacity. Uh, since we are using our own static random type, the alternate option would be to make it so that our um, our random was able to be assigned in some way, so either able to override that static or something like that, which is, again, easy to do. Uh, you can also, uh, for those of you that might be wondering, um, forever we have pointed out one of the problems with static methods in languages is the fact that they are difficult to mock out when you are trying to test them. Um, that being said, many languages have a concept uh, that people build using the tools of the language called a shim. We sort of have them in C Sharp uh, sometimes the concept of a shim is basically that you're just gonna insert it. You're gonna, you are gonna mock a static method is effectively what it's gonna do. But it's sort of like jumping into the language and saying like, "Hey, let me hop in here and get in the way of this." Uh, why does that not appear in the search? I'm not sure, Shoji. Yeah, I yes, I. I tried the same thing. I tried searching for sloth because I was like, and I figured they must have gotten rid of that because I was like, I know there's a sloth emote and it's not there. Okay, either way, we're 100% we're adding serious sloth in there. That has to be in there. You can't possibly not have serious sloth in this list. Okay. 
So we're going to have a triple payout and a single payout. So what's it pay out for each one of those? All right, so now let's create a constructor uh, for that so that it's easy to make. Uh, again, in the long run, this is going to be coming in from configuration so that the streamer can choose what their options are. But for now, we're just going to hard code it right into here. Uh, so we're going to say this is now a list of slot emotes and slot emote. And we're going to say new slot emote. Whoops. Is that good? Okay. That's good. What's it doing? Why do I not have... Uh, there we go. For some reason, my my uh, cursor wouldn't uh, wouldn't go with me there. Don't know what that was about. But either way, there we go. Really? I'm supposed to clean up that file when I do that. Okay, so choosing a random item. Uh, this is going to be a slot emote now. Not this, and the display is going to be slightly different, so we can't we can't just join results. It is results select text like that. Okay, so in theory now this should work again. Ah. Okay. Uh, I don't know why the discrepancies I have seen happen with some others. I don't. Uh, delete by the moderator nightbot. Uh. I, I apologize, whomever that was that got their uh, uh, link uh, destroyed by Nightbot. My Nightbot is still configured to destroy links with, uh, you know, a, a, a fierce hammer of injustice. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Node.js I have an exception for. Uh, and a number of other things. Keep in mind that Twitch thinks that's a link a lot of times, too. So it's like, no, no one was typing in Node.js as a link, guys. What are you doing? What are you doing? Ah, uh, we, we, that's one of those ones that's like, yeah, everyone just kind of puts in a basic, uh, a basic regex and is like, yeah, this will, this will catch it. This will, this will find links. Oh, why am I putting that on the screen? You guys don't care about that. Okay. Uh, so, hello world, the bot has arrived. So, let's try out slots again. Okay, slots still works. We have not broken it. Hey, sloth! Okay. Uh, so, that'll print out the result. So, this is... This is the... Uh, is it a real display? Is it called a real? Is that what it is? All right, we'll 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 say that for now. Um, payout total equals uh, calculate payout. So calculate payout is going to take in a sequence and return a payout. Let's go ahead and test this one because this will work really well for that. Uh, ASP.NET. Uh, yes, Nightbot certainly is supposed to know about ASP.NET. Uh, yes, Pudding. It is me, the real one. I'm actually here. Isn't that crazy? It, it's me. It's me. It's not a lie. I'm really me. Okay. Um. Welcome and thank you for following, though I cannot read the name that is displaying right now. Um. <laughs> 
Hey, uh, just just for the record, Mr. Shoji, for the people that are surprised that I am here, because uh, it's true, um, it has actually been quite a while since I've done my regular stream, um, almost a year. Um, for, like, the past while now, I have been working, like, 50 to 60 hour weeks, and so that's why my stream went to, like, Saturdays only. Uh, and even then, it was pretty short Saturdays. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, I am now only working like 20 some hours a week, which is great. So I now have uh, time to stream again, which is good. So I am I am glad to be here again and streaming. Uh, my my preferred schedule is like 30 some hours a week of work. That's that's my favorite. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yes, Wheatlaw, I work remotely. What like how would how would a pandemic impact that? <laughs> like. Yes, exactly. Uh, the the pan so the company that I was working with during the pandemic is one that has had increased business during the pandemic uh, because it is one of those essential businesses. Um, that being said, my project wasn't really related to any kind of increase in that in like the amount of work there, but it's still one of those like. There's no reason to slow down. If anything, they're speeding up on things, and that meant other people I was working with were busier. So, it's quite weird how that works sometimes. Uh, so let's build a command for our slots. Did I put this in a slots? Yes, I did. Good. Uh, let's do guess for now it'll be in um, the slot command tests folder and then I will do a class that I will call Calculate payout. I may pull this out of the command and put it somewhere else, but for now it's going to be in here. And we're going to say that should. Now, what was I doing in here? X unit. Thank you. I couldn't remember if I did X unit or N unit in this one. I usually do X unit when it's .NET Core and N unit when it's .NET Framework. Um complicated reason for why and if anybody's freaking out right now because test one then that means that you probably haven't been here very long i always use a terrible name to begin with uh, and the reason why is that i care more about what i am testing and doing it rather than coming up with a name and by doing a name like test one i really should not commit test one which means eventually i have to come around and think of it whereas if i try to come up with a name right now while i'm not while i haven't you know, created the test and come up with what it is, my name is likely to be bad. But it might be good enough that I don't go back and think of a new one. So I go with the bad name to begin with, so I have to go back and fix it. Um, being an NHS supplier has us all over the place, too. Oh, yeah, very much so. Um, uh, so, yes, exactly. Anybody that was lucky enough to uh, have a job that was secure during this time period, uh, it is a great thing to be thankful for. Uh, but make sure that you reach out and help everyone that <laughs> that didn't. Uh, if you if you are in a place where you can, like if your company is thinking about hiring, be sure you're hiring people. Uh, and yes, names are absolutely the yes. Calculate payout should test one. Yes, precisely. That's the name of the test. Uh, okay, so let's make the command that is going to be a no, not what slots command. Slots command. Um. What am I using? Mock? Cool. Uh, what, what, what is it? Uh, I repository. That's what I did. Uh, I think I'm using specification based repositories too. Um, new mock of an iCurrency generator. You know what? New mock iCurrency Generator. There we go. <laughs> and new mock of an iSettings factory. 
and dot object dot object and dot object now I suspect that I don't actually need to do anything with those because the results probably don't matter but if they do I will get to them when it does uh, I am good with doing that right where I am that's fine uh, actually, we'll put it in a constructor. We'll do this as a setup. All right, that's fine. Slots command, uh, calculate payout. Yeah, that's fine. So first off, our setup is these are the emotes, and this needs to be the payout. And then payout should be, um, I don't know, zero. We'll, we'll start off with uh, the simple case. All right, where was I in chat? Uh, your unit is perfectly named all of them, all zero of them. Yes, you can have no mistakes if you don't have any. There are, you have no failing unit tests, Wheatlaw. Uh, we're doing that. Uh, we've got about 60 to 75 people during the pandemic. Oh, nice, Mr. Shoji. That is good. Um, Coded Beard, that is insane. Uh, how does Mock make the instances of those interfaces? Uh, I'll be honest, I have not looked at the... the um, uh, the implementation of the MOQ uh, mocking framework. But yes, uh, Mr. Shoji's correct. Dark magic is a perfectly valid way to describe that. Hang on a sec. You may get that. One sec. I'll be right back. Hey, wait. Oh. You got it? We have a guest that's not really on the stream. <laughs> Thanks, see ya. The printer is in my room. Uh, my wife doesn't usually work from home, but during all of this stuff, she's been working from home, so she had to sneak in and, and get something off the printer. Uh, uh, let's see. But how do the mocks behave? I suppose that is quite important. Uh, yes, yeah, so how they behave is absolutely uh, the relevant detail there. That is that is correct. Uh, so quick explanation, since I don't think we're going to need them, but let's go ahead and just I'll just show it real fast. Um, actually, if I'm going to show it, then I have to extract it as a variable. So I'll do that. And no, I'm not going to name it. <laughs> Mock is not the correct name. Uh, but basically what you do is you just say setup and you say you know, what is going to get called. So for example, list would get called and I could say dot it is any, uh, whoops, any, um, I specification of type, I don't know, command entity. And then all I do is I say it returns, uh, what's that supposed to be? A uh, new list of command, uh, command entity. And so what this is going to do is it's basically going to say anytime this mock is called and someone calls its list method and what is passed to it is an object that is of type I specification of command entity. So if that's the parameter it receives and that's the method that was called, it is going to just return this value. Does that make sense? So... That, that is basically all, all it's doing. So, not, not much, but there are a lot more things you can do with the mocks than just that. There's, there's a lot of other... Uh, that's the 90% case. The real complexity comes in the other 10% of cases. 
<laughs> you can also make it so that it's not like any of that object type that takes in a parameter, but it could be a specific one, or you can require that the parameter meet some condition that you specify. There's all client, like there's so much like power in, in a mock that you can get away with. That being said, I also sometimes use fakes because sometimes it's easier to just use a fake than a mock. Okay. Let's go ahead and create some of these emotes. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, I'm actually, I kind of have the an idea for how this is going to work now. Um, okay. Uh, comma one one and comma one one. All right, so this needs to be A, B, and C, because what the emote is does not really matter. Uh, but what matters is whether or not they match. And then these are the payouts. So we're saying the payout should be zero. Uh, oh, did I do triple and single? Wait, I did triple and single, didn't I? Is that what I called them? Triple and single? Single. Okay. <laughs> Almost messed up my own test. Okay, so this test is going to fail. I think I now know its name. Uh, but then you can cheat and use link expression trees to build an expression of what the mocking method should do. And from that, generate IL code. Uh, yes, generating uh generating code from expression trees is uh mind bending and crazy uh yes there you go. it's fun but maintaining it yeah <clears throat> okay uh test obviously failed because i have not implemented it surprise i know everyone is truly shocked by the fact that this test failed to return zero all right, luckily, done. Click, click. Does that work? Yay. All right, so this is not test one. This is should uh, return zero uh, given unmatched. Uh, emotes i could specify in the test that it was unmatched without single payout values but that seems complex and instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave the name simple there and instead leave the part that creates the exception in the case that it's included not the case where it's excluded and i think that'll be uh pretty clear to someone reading these tests that that one doesn't have single payout things when there's one that talks about that Okay, so uh, should return uh, single value given uh, single payout emote. All right, so this one is going to be uh, replace this occurrence. This is the single payout. We'll have it pay out 100. So we're going to say the payout should be the single payout. We'll say, we'll call it expected. Got an idea of these. Yeah, some, so, <laughs> the people that have watched my stream for a long time probably know this already. Uh, for everyone else, I am very against uh, the idea of, welcome SNB, uh, not welcoming SNB, I'm very against the idea of using the um, code coverage as a metric. So if you've ever seen teams that use code coverage as a metric, I am very, very against that. 
Uh, and there are a couple of reasons why. Uh, one of those big reasons being I, over a decade ago, worked on a project where we used code coverage as a metric. And I can tell you exactly what happened. We increased our code coverage metric to the detriment of the project, even though our tests were usually valid, uh, they passed, we kept them maintained, they stayed green, but the problem is it made us test things that should not have been tested. It also meant that uh, some of our tests called things that they didn't really verify well because the problem is that code coverage gives you the confidence that is tested which can be bad uh, but it also gives you uh tests that test things that shouldn't be tested so some code it should be integration tested but not unit tested uh for example also welcome smb thanks for that uh 21 month resub oh uh that's that's impressive either way welcome back um I know I mentioned to people like a couple of months ago that starting in July I'd be streaming again, so uh, you see I didn't lie about that. I lied about all the other stuff. And by lied about all the other stuff, I mean was wrong about the other stuff? Let's be nice. <laughs> okay, so let's go calculate a payout correctly. Uh, so we're going to say if results... Uh, well, actually... Instead of just returning zero, let's do this. Let's return results dot sum of the single payout amount. Single payout. Done. And that'll actually cover us for the next case. So if we want to do this in the real cheater way, here, let's 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 temporarily do the real cheater way. And we'll just say return <laughs> results first that <laughs> single payout because <laughs> because why not if we're gonna do tdd like you mean it we're gonna do the like cheat so if i were doing like the ping pong pairing thing this is the this is the uh the answer that you could give which is basically return that uh uh so um yeah so the contract that had me working uh, massive overtime uh has has uh, wrapped up the overtime and I'm I'm now just in maintenance mode so I've got like a bucket of hours that I'm working with them on uh, but not like you know putting in more than you know massive numbers of hours a week so yay for my schedule being back um, okay so return single value given single payout amount um, so let's change things. So I wrote this as a fact, which means that it is a test that is written this way. I am going to change this to be a theory. Uh, for it, it, theory is is you can think of this like some people. If you're if you're an n unit user, think of that this is test cases. Uh, for anyone else, it's that I can take a single method and parameterize it. So I am going to do this this way and say inline data is going to be. Do I care about the letters? I care about the letters. No. No, I don't. Uh, so the single payout amount is going to be z zero, zero, zero. Um, we're going to change this to be sum of payouts given single payout emotes. Okay. Um, payout one, two, and three. Not huge on the names, but I don't feel like making them longer than that. So expected is going to be P1 plus P2 plus P3. Or should I just make expected be on here? I'm going to do the calculation myself up there so it is clear what it is. So this will be zero. And yes, I'm aware that this is matching our other cases. Uh, you recently wrote a... Uh, 
Can you make an array in the inline data? Uh, wheat law, yes, you, you absolutely can. In fact, you can even make uh, a params array in there if you want. Okay, so that is P1. That is P2. And that is P3. And we're expecting that to be the expected result. But now let's create our previous test, which was we were expecting one to be there and one to be there. So this is the test we've already tested, but also includes the test above this one. Um, can you make instances of your own classes? Yes, technically. So if you need to get into weirder things, you can use something instead of inline data. For, so inline, for inline data, like we've got right here, these need to be compile time values. But uh, yes, uh, but uh, you can access member data. So you can make uh, essentially a class. Uh, you can make a method in here that will have all the data that you want to have as the inputs to the test. So there's other other types of data inputs that you can do, and there's also an, like a couple of other complex ways that you can make actual full objects that define what your test scenario stuff is. So if you're in a really complex place, you can do some really complex stuff. Twitch Love, welcome, greetings. Welcome back. Are you shocked that we're here? Shocked, I tell you. It is a dev chatter. We have not had this in a while. Uh, that'll be two. And now just to make sure that no one did the whole, like, you just won it. So that should be 12. Good enough. I think that's a reasonable number of test cases of that. Did, is it totaling up single values? That's the question. The test failed. Oh no, how did it fail? Oh geez, let's look at that code. What could possibly have gone wrong? Oh man, almost as if I put in the cheater code. All right, there we go. There, There's the real code. Yay. Come on, you better pass. Don't make me look bad, test. There we go. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. So that is a nice passing test to make sure that we're summing those up. So the next thing we need to do is handle triple payouts. So let's do a quick triple. So we're gonna say public void uh, returns triple value only given uh, matching emotes. For now, I'm going to start this as a fact, not a theory, and we'll adjust to a theory if it makes sense. So let's create our emotes. But uh, no, we're not going to create our emotes. We're going to do this. We're gonna make the, that be a hundred and uh, oh, you know what? We are gonna make our emotes. But it's gonna be one emote. Um, a Emote, emote, emote. Okay, so when we calculate the payout of the emotes, we should end up with this value. So that is expected. And that's gonna fail nicely. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Shoji, you are 100% correct. If the code in order to, uh, if, if the code that you're using to test is the same as the code of the implementation, you didn't actually test it. 
it is a it is a sad thing that that uh, comes up. Hang on one second. Okay. So, this test, as expected, failed, and we expected to get 100, but it found zero. And why? Because we're not doing triples yet, we're only doing singles. So let's go ahead and do the triple. And for that, we're going to go into the calculate payout method and say, um, if results all... Group by if results group by the text count equals one, that means they're all the same. Return results. First triple payout. Oh, whoops. Derp. Triple payout. I think that'll do it. What if the sum of single payouts is more than the triple value? Then someone configured it wrong, wheat lol. <laughs> is the short answer. Uh, yes. So the funny thing is, Mr. Shoji is right. Uh, the code that we wrote is slightly a hack. So if you don't know the con the concept, essentially what we did was we did a this is link, uh, language integrated query. So it essentially gives you like query style support. For for, uh, query style support for your uh, C sharp just objects. So think on collection. So if you were doing a SQL group by, it works the same way. So we've essentially said take all of these objects, group them by the value they have for a text. So essentially that says, hey, make these into collections grouped by that text value. So if you had three separate emotes, you would have three collections. If you had two separate emotes, say you got a a kappa and two serious sloths, you'd have a group for the kappa that would be a group of a single element, and you'd have a group for the serious sloths that would have two elements in it. And that's what you'd end up with if you ran this group by. And we're saying if when you group those three elements, you end up with a group of three, that means that you had the group count is one. You only had one group at the end of that, which means that we know all of your items have the same amount. The cool thing about that is, right now I said triple payout, but it wouldn't technically have to be three. You could do four or five. This is really saying all of them. Because realistically, if we were gonna do it this way and we were gonna pay out separate amounts for having like two, you know, maybe something pays out if you have two or three, doing a group by can let us know the number of items in that group also. So we could say, do the groups and say any groups that had three would get a triple payout. Any groups that have two would get a double payout. Any groups that had four would get a quadruple payout, a quintuple payout, etc. So if we were going to do that, we would just extract this group out here and check the count of the elements in the list instead of the count of the number of groupings. But the code would be fairly similar. Um, Okay, uh, so that should work. Right? I need to check anything else with that. Um, do we want doubles? 
Do we want things that pay out if you get two of them? Let's do it. We'll make doubles. Uh, okay. Uh, let's say get test emotes. Let's do string T1 String T T two string T three. Okay, so T one T two T three. And C. Okay, so let's do the same thing for... So that gets us our test emotes. Ugh, no, I don't like that. No, we're backing up. I don't like that. No, don't like it. Don't like it. Maybe I should just make a set of emotes. Alright, I'm making some emotes. I don't want to use this set of emotes because I want to have control of them. Making my own emotes. Uh, are you developing a slots game with emotes? Uh, yes, I am, SNB. Um, I am finally getting around to doing one of these that, like, every bot in the world has already done, but why not? Whoops. I don't know why it didn't want to fix these. I have a thing that's supposed to automatically fix all the spacing and everything to the way I like, but it's not. it didn't fix these. You know, I should have find replaced on that, but whatever. Uh, okay, so... Um, This will be a zero. So we'll save this as no single payout. There we go. Um, there it is. Oh, I guess it'd be fine probably if I put the, if I corrected the order, wouldn't it? If I put this first, would it be happy? Yeah. We'll do Pog Champ as this one with a hundred. Uh, and we'll make one called Single Payout, which will be the Hey Guys. So let's call it one. Single one, and then two and three will be seems good and 
Bible thump. Okay. This was these three. Oops, there we go. And then this is my triple payout one. Underscore triple payout. All right, chat blowing up on me. Sorry about that, chat. Uh, you write shader code these days. You don't. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect you to write a lot of tests on shader code. Uh... <laughs> Now that I think about it, I'm not sure I even need this list. Single one, two, three. A triple payout on that one with no, and then... We'll call that no payout. Kappa will have absolutely zero payout. Okay, so return zero given unmatched emotes. Uh, so we'll do... Uh, no payout one, two, or three. Uh, so it'll be Kappa, Kappa HD, and Kappa Pride. There we go. So it'll be no payout one, uh, no payout two, and no payout three. And instead of taking in these, uh, I... I guess we could create them here if we want, but let's do returns triple value given matching emotes. So let's pull that out of here and we're gonna do triple, triple, triple. And the expected value is just straight up the triple payout of that. Okay. Do I change this test to take in those values instead? I think the answer is going to be yes. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Alright, that test is named Foo now. Congratulations, test. Slot emote. Inline data. Can I do them? Nope, I can't do them. So in that case, I won't do it. I couldn't remember if I could do it that easily, so I think the way I'd have to do it is make a member collection, and uh, I could do it that way. <laughs> Triple canvas, you lose all points. Uh, we could do something like that potentially where Kappa is special. But let's go ahead and try it this way, I guess, for now. <coughs> uh, especially if we did like three different Kappas has some special meaning. That would be really cool. All right, so uh, looking over here, we said uh, the payout total would be this. So for now... Is currency generator just how we do this? I don't remember how it works. Uh, oops. Undersc underscore currency generator. Add currency to. Uh, that name. 
tokens to add, the payout total. Okay, so, uh, currency generator. How do we use that today, I wonder? Well, that's where I'm doing it there. Oh, I really shouldn't be using display name there, but that's fine, I guess. All right, whatever. That's okay. If not, uh, well, if not, currency generator, remove currency from name, uh, slot settings, I'm gonna say default bet for now, and we'll let them choose it later, but for now we'll do that, so if that fails, then we're gonna say return, but first off we're gonna send a message. Freestyle Coder, welcome! Thank you for that follow, your name is familiar, but welcome to the stream, glad you're here. Uh... Oh, is, uh, so that is actually a fantastic question, uh, Fuel Snabel. Uh, I, I, I'm certain that Maui is not, like, ready for people to use, but I don't know about whether or not you can, like, try it right now. I haven't gone looking, but I do want to try it. It's what I've been asking for on the stream and other places for a long time. Uh, as soon as Donna Core came around, it was like, okay... Cross plat UI, cross plat UI. Look, <laughs> let's go. Um, uh, yes, Wheatlaw, I agree. The payout should be based on the bet. Uh, but for now, since I'm not adding in the command args to be able to change the bet, it's just going to be a static payout amount in this, and then we'll add that in as we go. Um, uh, sorry, uh, name. You need default bets, coins to play. I think that will work, assuming that my currency generator works the way I think it does. And then we'll return to escape out of that, and then down here we will add currency to name the payout total and then display it you know what we're going to display it regardless aren't we well yeah whether they win or not okay so that's the display <laughs> Let's do what's the word I'm looking for. We're either saying sorry or congratulations. Um, Bob is not the word. Um, all right, that's called intro for now. Because I can't come up with what it is. Uh, if payout total is greater than uh, zero, then 
Congratulations! Or better luck next time. Uh, response, that's a good word. Response, yes. You won, uh, oops, dollar. Uh, this is payout total coins. Okay, so we're gonna have the real display followed by the response. I think that'll work. Yes. It, it, precisely, Wheatlaw. You, you, you have the point. Uh, what I want to do is uh, have the third option be if your payout total matched, then you essentially got your money back, which is totally a thing in a slot machine. You can absolutely get your exact money back. Uh, in this case, uh, I went with greater than zero because congratulations. I'm going to congratulate you even if you didn't even lose. But uh, considering that right now... Uh, I don't think my settings even like I think that's gonna default to zero if this call even works. That call does work. So the cost is zero right now, I think, anyway. But you're you're right. I can say I could do default bet in here. The challenge is that better luck next time isn't a great response to that. So I, I need to make the third message. But for now, let's see if this works. Cost is zero. Uh, I'm, I'm running the bot right now. We're going to find out. Cost is zero. Totally fine. Cur currently free slot machine, everyone. Luckily, your odds are so low that it does not matter. Hey, three coins. You won three coins. Congrats on the three coins, everyone. Ha ha! Wheat lawn stone killer. No, no free coins for you there. Ha <laughs> ha! That was just. <laughs> uh okay so kappa um kappa will give nothing for now pog champ uh pog champ is fairly excited thing so pog champ will pay out five coins uh, and a hundred. Hey guys is also a positive one. So let's go with se 75 coins and two. Seems good is also a positive one. So it'll pay out 50 and one, I guess. Bible thump isn't. So it'll pay out for a triple. It'll still pay out, but it's not going to give anything. Not like this is also a failure. So it's going to do that. Brain slug, again, also bad. Uh, what face?
Uh, dark mode. Uh, oh, that's an evil cap, isn't it? Uh, negative 10. There's no penalty for just getting one of those, but you don't want to get a set of them. Serious Sloth, 200. Congratulations, Serious Sloth. All right. They were winning three coins because every emote was set to a single coin prize, S and B. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no free coins, but the coins didn't matter anyway. So, who cares? <laughs> yeah, they were all set to give out one coin if they showed up even once. All right, let's give it a shot. Slots. Hey, hey, I won three. I won five coins. Uh, that was for my sloth. Wheatlaw won coins for the hay guys and the sloth. <laughs> Sorry, Stone Killer. Yes, I. Uh, it does have a ten coin requirement on there, but. I don't remember how to do this. Is that how I do it? Stone killer, have a free spin of the wheel. First one's free. That's that's how we encourage the addiction. Uh yes, an animations in chat. Yes, we're not gonna do chat animations. Oh man! <laughs> Coated beard and stone killer both got uh both got some some dead ones that returned back zero coins. Wow, SMB has more coins than I do. I won a coin! One coin! Ha ha! Two sloths. No one's no not even no one has even gotten a triple yet. <laughs> This is, it's like a real slot machine. You can sit there all day and you'll never actually get a good payout. <laughs> Alright, so so takeaway I've got right now is that I need to put in the... Congratulations, you won six coins, which is more or less the... Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Wheat Law is correct. Those congratulations a lot of times are lost coins. So uh, I'm going to stop the slot machine... And we're going to make a couple of changes. So first off, I need to put your name in the message so that we can tell you that you, you won or lost. Uh, so we're going to say... Uh, you won. Let's say congratulations, uh, name. You won that many coins... Okay, so, uh, response is going to be more complicated, so string response. Uh, if payout total greater than, uh, slot settings default bet. Then this is congratulations. So there's our congratulations. And we can toss this in a, in a nice method if we want to. Uh, else if uh, the payout total is greater than zero, means you got some money back. Otherwise... Uh, Uh, yes, of course the game is rigged, SNB. The games on this channel are always rigged. Come on, you know that. Okay, uh, better luck next time 
name. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> at least you got payout total coins back. Uh, name. Uh, Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, the slots have stolen. Ah. Uh, whoops. Negative payout total that from you. Uh, we're going to skip the sorry. I'm just going to say the slots have stolen that much money from you. Pet total is greater than zero. At least you got that coin's back. Better luck next time. Let's not so stolen that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Name. <laughs> just laugh at him. Great suggestion, Wheelo. We'll just laugh at him. Uh, what happens if you pass negative money to add currency? I think it works. I think it. I think it removes them. It's that, or I have to remove currency. Uh, I guess just for safety's sake, I could flip it if you want. That's not the worst idea. Let's, yeah, let's do that. And just for uh, the sake of... Uh, We'll only actually add and subtract. So if it's greater than zero, do that. If it is less than zero, then we will remove currency from them. And the amount is going to be... I guess I could do this just for... Math dot absolute value payout total. Uh, that's a good point. Um, how does this implement? Uh, user has to have at least that number, so it returns false. <laughs> oh, very nice, SNB. Yes, you you clipped a a rig. No, no, SNB. These games aren't rigged. Rigged. I was out of context. You took that way out of context. <laughs> uh, so if the user doesn't have enough coins, do we just can we take them all?
<laughs> no kidding, you're not clipping that one. Uh, all right, so remove currency from... Oh, dang it, I need to adjust how this currency... See, I handle currency better in i7 than I do in this one because I care more about it there. Okay, so first off, this needs to go in a method because this is just nasty. Uh, Control-Shift-R, create me a method that is going to be... Uh, get response. Okay. Um, this could just be returns, actually, because I'm not building one at all. Each of these could just return. Return, 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 and these all then simplify. Because then that doesn't exist, that doesn't exist, this does not need an else. That does not need an else, and this one goes away entirely, and there we go. So now if it's greater than that, return that one, return that one, return that one, that one, that one. There we go. Ha! Ah, much better! Much better! Yay! Okay, um... Uh, adjust currency. Okay. Yeah, I need to adjust some, some code in that. Uh, basically what I'm planning on doing is adjusting how remove currency works I don't think it's used very frequently so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna make this return back an int Uh, always take so that'll be false or Uh, that's fine, I guess. Not exactly what I want it to be. Naming's hard. Naming is so hard. <laughs> Take all if insufficient and add as all. I'm just going to default to false. Um... and not take all so if they don't have enough and we said not to take all return false return zero this is an int and then in this Which I kind of want to change how this works. I want to say if chat user collection user has at least username tokens to remove. So if they do have enough, then we're going to remove it and return back tokens to remove. If they do not have enough, then the scenario is 
And this we're gonna do return zero at the end if 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 that. But we're gonna say if take so if we're in this scenario, then we want to take whatever the amount is and return back what we took. Otherwise, we're returning zero. <laughs> yes, fleece viewer, ripoff viewer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. No, SNB, I'm not getting the viewers. I'm just getting the chatters. Those people brave and or foolish enough to type in the chat are going to get their coins stolen away. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so take all of it in insufficient. Uh, chat user collection. Let's reduce coins, dude. That's funny. I think reduce coins is actually what I want to call. That's funny. Um, uh, We'll remove all of their tokens, and then return it. Yeah, um... Wheatlol, I think the other ones are in transactions. I think, I think the methods that I'm calling are in transactions, if I remember correctly. But... That, that's something that I like to not think about at the higher level and create a class wrapping around the data that makes the that, that does the operations that you're trying to do and then at that lower level where you're actually keeping track of it is where you do those because uh, I think the update the users I think is the one that locks if I remember correctly but you are right that at that level I should lock based on has enough uh, of the things which I definitely wasn't doing so I should lock there but I didn't. Um... Charge generator, remove currency from that name. If that equals zero, then respond back with that. All right, was there another build error somewhere? Can I convert into bool? Um, so this, invert, please. And then say equals zero. Oh, that's interesting, because the return was on there. So then I end up with this, and then I don't even need the else. Nice! I like that better. Good improvement. Thank you, thingy. All right. Um, let's try it. Time for more slots attempts. Yay! Slots! At least you got one coins... one coins back. Whoops. Grammar. At least you got five.
Come on. Gotta get a win somewhere. Where's a win? Come on. Man, this is so rigged, it's unbelievable. <laughs> These payouts better be really good. Hey, Miha, welcome. Oh, I'm so close. Almost got it. There's seriously no congratulations anywhere in there. I just can't, can't get it. Yeah, it's totally rigged. It's totally rigged. Rigged. Yeah, see? For, for anyone that was wondering, when I said this ch uh, at the beginning of the stream, I mentioned uh, that our that Dev Chatter is actually a uh, two-and-a-half-year-old stream. Look at the date on that quote. Because, you know, you can't lie about dates. That's that's just not possible. No one no one could lie about a date like that. But but seriously, yeah, Mar March 20th, 2018 is is when is when chat first uh, started calling me out for rigging rigging games in the bots <laughs> they're they're watching me if it's rigged they know how it's rigged they watched the code okay um Debating what to do about the, uh... So one thing we could do to, uh, make it more likely to win would just be remove a couple of the, uh... Like, remove the, the, uh, the Bible thump, for example, could totally be a thing. We remove that one. And the... Well, the, the brain slug's kind of nice. Let's leave the brain slug in. Um... That ought to increase the rate of success. Oh. What else do we want to change about this? Uh, I don't want to pass in the different bets just yet. <clears throat> do we want to make doubles a thing? Let's make doubles a thing. Let's make let's make two of the two of a certain one paying out some amount a thing. So let's go to the slot emote. The single pay, uh, whoops, single payout, no. Derp, I already have single payout, Brendan. Come on, man. The Sobel payout, the double payout. Uh, int double payout. Okay. Uh, please assign that property, there we go. Okay. So now, every place that I've got this is broken. Hey, thank you, SNB. Alright, so if you get two Kappas... Ah, uh, that's minus two. Triple Kappa is minus ten. Uh, actually, let's make that one the, wor the worst one. Make that minus two. This minus one. Pog Champ. Uh, Pog Champ is a good one. So let's make it pay out twenty if you if you got two of them. Hey guys, will pay out five if you got two of them. Ten. 
ten if you got two. Seems good. Not won't pay on anything. No, nothing for seems good. Not like this. No, nothing. Brain slugs. No, brain slugs won't pay out either. If you get two slaws, you get fifty. And what face is also worth nothing. Okay, so let's jump over to our test of this, and we're going to make zero, 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 and zero, because we don't have any tests on the double payout just yet. But let's go ahead and make those tests on the double payout so that we can actually make this work. So this needs to have zeros in it as well. Okay, uh, returns triple value only given matching emotes. Um, returns uh, double value given matching, I'll say matching pair. We'll do uh, that and a no payout. So two doubles and a no payout. So let's go up here to this. We're gonna call this one double payout. Uh, serious sloth. We'll have in here as a double payout. And then the last one returns double and single given uh, with single. So this is the payout. Do I not have a single payout one? We'll do single payout. Okay. Um, uh, what's going to pay out for this? This is Brain Slug. There you go. There's the single payout one. Not the cleanest test, but it works. So that'll be, should be double payout plus the single payout, single payout. Alright, so those tests should fail right now, and we should be able to make them pass by just uh, fixing that method to calculate uh, singles. So you might remember that I'd mentioned that I was going to extract out the groups and do this. So, whoops, I did not want to extract the count. I just want to extract the groups. So we'll call this... Uh, Emote groups. Okay, so for each emote group in the emote groups, uh, if emote group count equals three, you know what? I could switch this on the numbers. Switch on the emote group count <laughs> I wondered what it would do so resharper will generate labels for you on a switch automatically so if you have an, an enum it'll automatically fill those in I was like ah, it's an int I've never tried actually doing it what's it gonna do when I do an int uh, so if the case is one, always it's gonna have to be at least one. Um, we are gonna do 
total plus equals uh, the emote group first single payout break uh, which I guess means that could technically be the default and I could do two and three but I'd rather do this and do three so this is double triple uh, they are very nice. So uh, I, I, I too am a fan of the switch expression. They're nice. Um, not using that. Brain, you made it. Welcome to the stream. Brain, do you want to play slots with us? You should play slots with us, Brain. Yes, I, I did, Miha. I wrote I wrote a standard switch statement and talked about the fact that I like uh, um, uh, switch expressions. There you go, Brain. Have some free coins. Uh, Dev Ibex, uh, I'm guessing. Hello, welcome, greetings. Ah, I got five of my coins back. <laughs> we, we just wrote a slot machine today. Uh, it's... How brain get no message? I gave brain coins. But I gave brain coins. Why you lied to me, thingy? Brain, say coins. Do, do this command. First ever victory right there! I won 22 coins! Success! You have one? One coin? Is bonus not working? Do I have that command? No. Oh, okay. I guess it just didn't give them to you at first. Okay. So you should not be able to play Brain. <laughs> at least you got one coin back. Yep. <laughs> Wait a minute. Three Brain Slugs? I didn't have that worth more? Nope, three brain slugs. It's only worth ten. Is that our first triple? I think brain slugs is our first triple. <laughs> Sorry, brain. We don't give out great prizes for brain slugs. No, our, our prices are just like placeholder prices right now, not like and the payouts. They're all terrible right now. You don't actually this game is rigged. This game is one hundred percent rigged. One hundred percent rigged. J Steph, welcome! long time welcome to the stream you know <laughs> no one likes this slot machine especially since there are choices where it where it takes money from you that's that's the worst part of it uh okay so let's just bump all of these up hundred yeah there we go uh there we go. This will be way better now. A double of hey guys is actually worth enough to pay out something. A 
couple of seems goods will work too. A knot like this, a triple knot like this, a uh, double knot like this will get you something actually. A brain slug, double brain slug I guess will give out some prize for that. The what face, sure, you doubled up a what face. Dark mode is negative coins. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> all brain slugs should be high score. No all caps, please. No. <laughs> all right, we're bringing slots back. We're bringing slots back. Org. That's the weird thing about streams where you're actually building the chat bot and the games during the stream is that uh, chat can uh, chat can do stuff, but it's like, hey, there we go. I got another win. See, it's clearly rigged. I'm the only person that can win. Uh, looks like it's working perfectly. <laughs> hey, J. Steph, you proved me wrong. Someone else can win. There you go. Clearly, uh, you know, only only certain people can can win at, at these slots, and it's not me. <laughs> one coin for one brain slug. You want brain slugs to actually be worth a coin? I guess we could make brain slugs worth a coin. Hey, there you go. You got a. <laughs> you actually got one. <laughs> Yep. The, uh... The slot machine works. And I, I do like that it spits out coins regardless, but often fewer coins than you lost. Uh, I think I might reduce the number of ones that... Uh, the number of things that get you coins at all. Uh, these will all be configurable, would be the idea, but for now, works as is. Yes, exactly. Because you, you can't lose, if you lose all your coins every time, it's just a bummer. It's, uh, it's like 10 coins a spin or something like that, so like, you get 7 coins back, you really only lost 3 coins, it's not bad. You just really don't want to hit dark mode, because that's just mean. Uh, we can actually make it meaner. Let's make it meaner. That'll just... That'll just be awful. Alright. Time to commit some of these changes. Excellent. Uh, initials... Oh, you know what? Here. Here, chat. You can watch me commit this. Initial slot... Uh, game. There's our initial slots game. Yep. Hey, I won again. Uh, brain, if you if you stick around and watch, you can actually see how it works. A lot of it, I think, makes sense once you start reading the code a little bit. Uh, that's not to say that, you know, it's easy to just go out and write code, but um, even non-programmers can usually, like, follow what the code is doing, because a lot of times it'll say what it is. So it's easier to read modern code than, than a lot of people would expect. Uh, programming in the past was much more cryptic than it is today. Uh, we're we're much better at, at uh, the things that we write now because our languages have gotten a lot more verbose, so it makes it easier for um, people that uh, have not tried programming for, before to understand what's going on. Okay. Um, do, do, do. So that's the display on that. What else did we want to do with this? Um, uh, yes, Brain, that is correct. If you watch for at least six minutes of the stream today, you will be a professional software developer. That is that is how it works. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. 
Uh, just so you know, I used to do some, um, like, learn to code streams back in the day. Long time ago. I, I've done learn to code stream series twice. Uh, where we essentially did a handful of streams that are designed for like the absolute beginner to just start writing some code and see what it's like with the goal being that once you try a little bit, you can then start, you know, going off and doing some of your own programming uh, exercises and just try building something from scratch. So I would like to do that again someday. We'll see what happens with it. Either way, um... I can't do a long stream today, so uh, we uh, started a little over two hours ago, so I am going to do a little bit of a wrap-up, but I don't want you to leave just yet. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, people will stick around for a moment, as I do want to uh, at least make sure that we raid over to another stream, so uh, that is my plan for today. Uh, but I also want to talk about our future streams, because things have changed. So, if you were not here for the beginning, please stick around so you can hear some of these announcements. Uh, first off, uh, I am no longer working, like, 60-hour weeks. So, that means I, again, have time to do some streams. Hence, a weekday stream here on a Thursday. Uh, for those of you who were here for the past, uh, you probably already have the idea that... Uh, when I say that my schedule is four streams a week, that does not mean that I'm going to stream four streams a week every single time. That means I'm probably going to stream three and a half streams a week. So on average, it'll be, you know, either three or four streams uh, is probably likely. Because uh, in the past, I would often miss one stream or another just due to a scheduling conflict or something like that. Uh, I have not updated all the places with what our schedule is yet, but for anyone who is wondering... Our schedule here, uh, there's no way this works, is there? We try it. Google doesn't know where Ohio is. Okay, I have a feeling that my token is expired or something like that. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so I've got a, another thing to fix in the bot. Uh, the <clears throat> So the stream schedule is Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays, the streams start at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. On Thursdays, we start at noon Eastern Time. And on Saturdays, we start at 1. Uh, you can That information will be down below. And if you want to make sure that you catch these streams, be sure to hit the follow button, as that's the best way to get notified when I go live, if you make sure that you have notifications turned on, that is. Uh, but you can also follow without having notifications turned on, and then you can just look to see when the streams happen. Uh, additionally, you could follow me on Twitter, and there will be a link to that in chat as well as down below. Uh, and then there is also a uh, Discord community where you can uh, stay in communication with me and other members of our community. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Hustrick F. I am not sure how to say that. Uh, but either way, welcome. Thank you for following. Much appreciated. Uh, for uh, If you are interested in joining our Discord, it is a very welcoming community that is uh, just other people that are interested in programming there are very experienced programmers there are junior programmers lots of people in there uh brinkling thank you for following as well um and if you want to see some of our old episodes including maybe some of our intro to computer programming like our intro to c-sharp ones or maybe how we built our c-sharp uh system tray only application that actually is what runs the colors of these so if you just type in the color yellow it will change those little you know, thingies around the screen to yellow. Uh, and you can also do, like, hex code. So, like, that will change the color as well. Uh, so, we've done all that stuff. We have an archive on YouTube as well as here on Twitch. So, lots of awesome stuff uh, for anyone that wants to check it out. Uh, if you're wondering about the timing, because I gave the times in Eastern time, right now it is 2.30 my time. So, two and a half hours ago is when the Thursday stream starts. Uh, if this were Monday or Tuesday, it would have started a half hour ago. And if this were Saturday, it would have started 90 minutes ago. So if you take a look at the clock, that should get you an idea. Just around this time on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays is when I'll be streaming. So uh, you are one... Uh, no. Uh, wow. It took that? I'm actually surprised it took that. Either way. 
Uh, you are welcome, Brain. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, let's have a look at who is live today, because uh, I do want to make sure that we raid over to someone else, as it is a nice thing to do for uh, just the, uh, you know, community. Uh, uh, so, D so there were only five characters in your in your color. So, I didn't see the sixth character there, so I was surprised it counted that as a color. I might have something weird in the in the logic for that because I thought I only accepted three or six uh, um, digit uh, hex codes for that. Uh, but either way, you could do things like lime also, which is an, which is actually a pretty nice color for this stream. Okay, so um, on our next streams, we're probably going to focus either we're either going to continue working on dev chatter bot stuff, or options are either that. Uh, potentially taking a look at Interactive 7, which is our program that gives chat control of Interactive 7, uh, sorry, chat control of Final Fantasy 7. Uh, it's a WPF app that uh, we work on. Uh, or alternately, I might just do a general programming stream because we haven't done one in a while. So it's probably going to be one of those. Uh, but either way, I want to thank everyone for hanging out today. I really appreciate it. I want to make sure that I thank everybody who subscribed as well. So I'm going to roll our credits, run the outro, and raid us over to another stream. So if you want to see more awesome programming, stick around. So thanks, everyone. Let's roll some credits. So I want to make sure that I give special thanks to our moderators who helped out with the chat today. Crimson Green, thank you for uh, helping out. SNB, Mr. Shoji, thank you very much uh, for helping out with the chat. I want to thank these wonderful people for following our stream today, as well as Katrina, Mr. Shoji, Dr. Todd, House Basuk, and SNB, all for resubbing to our channel today. Uh, so with that said, I want to thank everyone for hanging out today. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully it is fairly enjoyable, and I will see you in a couple of days. Take care. Happy coding, everyone.